I got it on the uh, top of my table saw in the shed here. It's a little cool outside to work. It's 3.15 in the afternoon right now. Uh, the belts seem to be quite good. They're round belts. They seem to be in pretty good shape. There's one here. There's one here. And there's one here. I think that's it. I lubricated with Lubriplate the switch here, the mechanical part of the switch, and I oiled the rear of the motor. I can't get at the front. I think the motor is dry. Now, no matter what I do, what position I put this switch in, it's always engaged all the time at the shutter. I don't have very good lighting here. I have a flashlight here that I set up. No matter where I put this switch, and I don't think you can see that, but the shutter is moving. The sh shutter blade is moving. In other words, this don't spin freely because it's always what I call in gear at all times, no matter where I put the switch. That's the switch is in the off position right now. It should be free floating, but it isn't. And I checked everything in it. So it is not, there doesn't seem to be a defect. I think it's just the way it's made. It's always, the shutter is going at all times, no matter what. The lamp shuts on and off where it's supposed to. But no matter where I put this, the shutter is always going. I'm turning the switch around. The switch goes completely around and the shutter blade is turning. Take my word for it, it is turning. I just can't show you. Let me see, let me see if I can get in there and show you. Alright, you look right down here. You see it moving? No matter where I turn the knob, It's constantly engaged in the shutter. Constantly. No matter where I turn this switch. And as you see, the, each time I turn the switch, the mechanisms move inside. All functions seem to be working good. It's just that it's constantly engaged. In other words, there's no neutral. It's belt driven. You got a plastic wheel here, and I lubricated the center spindle. You got a plastic wheel here, and a plastic wheel here, and, and all heavy metal uh, bars and stuff in here. And over here, down here, see if I can make sure I'm in screen, I lubricated it with lubricant plate, and I oiled the motor bearings on the back. Um, I can get in to the, f to the front uh, and without getting oil on the belts. I don't have a pin oil or a needle oil or anymore. I used to have all that stuff in my workshop. But um, I'm going to turn this on. It still does its uh, slow start and then it's running for a minute or two and then it speeds up. So I think the front bearing is dry on the motor but there's no way I can get in there and I'm pretty sure this is the way the projector is supposed to be constantly engaged all right let me uh, let me uh, turn it on for you hang on okay the framer worked real hard it still works hard but I put some luber plate in here and here this works very hard too this moves the claw a little bit. This is like a framing control, too. I'm going to turn it on now. I'm going to plug it in. But before I do, I'm going to make sure this is in the stop position. Okay, I got it plugged in. I got my little light down here, LED light. And uh, it's in the stop position. Now I'm going to put it into the rewind position. Now, hear how slow that is? It's going to speed up. It'll speed up. It'll take a while. It's running slow right now. That's supposed to be the rewind. 
supposed to be the rewind. Yeah, that's the rewind position. There it goes. Okay, now we're gonna stop it. Uh, actually, this is the off position, or you can call it stop. Now, this is the forward. This is supposed to be a zoom lens. All right, I took this off, and this is a little hairy getting off. You have to pull the knob off the main function knob here, and there's a Phillips screw right here. You pull this off, and there's two tabs, plastic tabs. You have to be very, very careful. But before you do that, you have to pull this little tiny plastic knob off the focus here. And I stand corrected. This is a zoom lens. It just did not want to move, and it's probably because it's cold. But now, if you see, if I gently pull it, I can see I'm pulling it out. And what threw me off is it was still moving in and out for focusing. So you just push it back in. You go real slow. You don't want to force this because it could strip the uh, little uh, grooves that are in there to operate this lever here. All right, so I cleaned the film gate as best I could. And we got some junk in here I gotta get out. All right, this is your uh, film track here. This forms kind of like a little loop here when the film goes through. And this is your other loop former here. So when the film, when you put this cover back on, it follows these tracks, you can see them in there. Okay, and the film comes down through the, the gate here, and through, and down, through, and up, and out the uh, for the take-up. And this is a take-up uh, tension adjustment, I think. Okay, so I got this turning easier, but this is really turning very, very hard. But it's better now, but still a little hard. I can sacrifice some... Um, Eight millimeter leader, I'm sure, in here. In fact, we're gonna do that. I gotta put this cover back on. We'll come back in a minute. All right, the cover's on. It's, you know, the the knob doesn't stick too very far, so it's hard to turn, because you don't have much to grab on, only the edge of this now. But that's the way it is, because it's all the way down here. And it's made to be taken off. This one you have to be very careful with, and really I don't recommend you anybody taking it off. Now we're going to put the knob back on, and we left it on the uh, stop portion. Okay, so now everything works good. We're going to try running a film in this. We're going to grab just anything and put it through here and see if it works. This is supposed to be auto-threading, so I don't have to worry about setting loops or everything's supposed to be all done automatically. So we'll set your camera up here and we'll give you a quick uh, run of this. Alright, you've seen some of my uh, work that I've done on this uh, GAF uh, ANSCO Vision Model 588. Now, just for the heck of it, I don't need a bulb, but uh, the bulb that uh, the projector uses, or what's in there now, is a DJA. All right, this is not the, this is not the same number, but I guess it crosses over DCL. Uh, but anyways, the cheapest is is uh, thirty six dollars. Well, here's one here, but it's saying select manufacturer. There is no ANSCO, and there is no GAF. So if I wanted to replace the bulb in that projector, there is no GAF. There's GE, there's GEHA, Hewlett Packard, no GAF. So you can't get a bulb for a GAF. You have to go by the number.
That's just an example, but so I don't know how much these people are getting. Here's one on eBay for 50 bucks. Uh, this is a DGA, a, a DJA. Oh, marked down to sixty dollars and seventeen cents. So, but projection bulbs are, are insane, and everybody's nuts. And they only last fifteen hours. Here's another one. Fifty bucks. So, I just wanted to show you that it doesn't pay to do any films uh, because it's way too expensive to run the projectors. Because now I'm talking about Super 8 now. So this is the uh, DJA bulb that I got out of the gaff. The reason I took it out is because I'm going to be uh, turning it on and off, on and off, on and off to try to get it to uh, uh, try to get it to thread without jamming the film, and then I'll put this back in if it does work. Now I got the Anscovision gaff Anscovision. You can't find any manufacturer of gaff anymore, nor Anscovision. So you have to go by whatever bulb is in here. In this case, it's a DJA bulb. But anyways, they they range from thirty-six dollars, and I've seen them as high as eighty-one dollars, and that's insane. That's totally insane. So I won't. If the bulb burns out, you might as well throw the projector out. But anyways, I'm going to try to work on this on the kitchen table here because it's too cold in the shed. And I want to find out why the um, film gets down to here and then it jams up. So I want to do that off camera. And... Um, I got I brought some film into the house here got everything warmed up I got the projector in here for a couple hours now because it's cold out and I'm going to try to thread it through and like I say there'll be no bulb I want to see it it jams up it seems to get only about this far and then it all bunches up in the gate and why I don't know because I everything was clean here so I'm going to see if I can run it with this cover off all right I got the bulb in well I'm going to project this, and I tried projecting two films. Projector worked fine, but they're all black films. They're all the ones I pulled out of uh, Super 8 cartridges uh, without having them processed to test the sound on one of my cameras that wasn't working good. So we got to go into this. This is my good stuff. This is uh, family and stuff. This is 200 foot reels. They're all silent. I have another one like this that has almost as much in it, which is sound. And then I got 400 foot reels. And I used to have them coded um, in a book. And I think the book is at the workshop. And in the book, like in this one is the code AR. And you'd look up code AR and it told everything that's on the film. Uh, this is home movies, Thanksgiving and stuff. Let's see if I can find one for you that is not family. Hang on a minute. Okay, we're going to try now. We got one that's here, um, a little about three quarters full here. It's supposed to be a local country music show back around 1971, but there's no sound. This is, I used to shoot a uh, silent film before I got a sound camera. And uh, I used to bring a tape recorder along. And then when I got home, that's what the movie screen on the wall was for. So I'd synchronize as best I could using a tape recorder and starting the tape and the film at the same time. As soon as the film started where the leader ended and came into the film opening here, I was to turn on the tape recorder and I'd have the tape set. I'd use a cassette and have it set so that I turn this on and the tape recorder at the same time. And it wouldn't be in perfect lip sync, but you did have sound with it, although it wasn't in perfect step. But that's how I did it when I started out before having sound movie cameras. So this is a silent film taken at a local high school back in the good old days when they used to have country music shows. I'm not sure who was at this show. I, I don't know whether it was Dick Curlis or Jeannie C. Riley, but I've seen them both back in those years. So 
Let's try to project it on the wall here and see what we can come up with. <coughs> Start right now.
Well, that's all I'm going to do for tonight. This is working really well, even though the motor is engaged at all times and the shutter goes around, uh, as I showed you before. Uh, I guess that's the way it's made. It's, it works very well. When you put the film through here, and make sure that the end is squared off before you insert it here, and you have a little loop in it like that. So there's a natural curve when it comes off anyways, but you want to have that curve continue. So when it goes in, it'll go down gently. It'll go down around the, uh, uh, the uh, loop former. And then there's another loop former down here. <clears throat> and then, of course, it comes up here. Now, I can never get this to take. This is supposed to be an auto take up, so I have to put scotch tape on it to, to hold it, which when it rewinds, pulls out and makes a mess in, in here because of the tape being on it. Okay, so that's it. That's all we're going to do for tonight. Thanks for watching.